In this video, you will see how a computer-controlled AI learns to play the game T-Worlds. I will show you that in the beginning the AI doesn't really understand what to do in the game and that it will eventually improve and become a better player. But first of all, let me introduce you to the game itself that we are trying to solve today. T-Worlds is a free 2D online multiplayer game where you control a small round character called a T. You are able to jump around, wield different weapons and use a hook in order to navigate platforms, walls and other obstacles. Putting these mechanics together results in many different game modes. You can fight other players with the four different weapons you are given in game modes like Deathmatch or Capture the Flag. Or if you want to switch things up, you can decide to be friendly and help other players if they get stuck somewhere in different game modes we are supposed to work together. T-Worlds also features a map editor similar to Mario Maker which enables you to create your own challenges and obstacles that need to be overcome. This makes creating an AI for the game really interesting to me because I can create a level and gradually increase the difficulty in order to see if an AI player could solve the challenge I created. Now that you know what T-Worlds is, let's take a look at how you can control your T. To move around we have the following options. You can jump, move left or right, or you can combine these to jump diagonally, but you can also use your hook in a 360 degree circle around your T to hook into the ground or surrounding walls in order to gain full control over your acceleration and speed. The rocket launcher can also be used to gain even more speed by shooting the ground right where you stand. Combining all of these movement mechanics together enables some players to achieve some absolutely ridiculous tasks. Creating an AI that is able to do something comparable to this would be absolutely amazing. But since this is my first real project outside of reinforcement learning tutorials or courses in university, let's focus on simpler challenges for now. The thing I just mentioned, reinforcement learning. We need to talk about that for a short bit to be able to understand how an AI really learns how to play games. The idea behind reinforcement learning is that an agent interacts with its environment to learn which actions to take in order to be rewarded. Let me explain this concept. The agent in our case is the T in the middle of the screen, which is able to move around. The environment is T-Worlds, or more specifically the current level we are on. And lastly, the reward is just a numeric value similar to a score which we will return to the learning algorithm. This is needed in order to determine if past actions were good or bad. In our case I created a mat with a finish line for the T to get to. If the T gets closer to the finish line, it will receive a reward and vice versa, the T will be punished for moving away from our goal. But as of now our T does not know which actions to take, nor does it know which actions even exist. As of now he's just able to sit around and do nothing. Even though you might think it is obvious which actions are available to our small friend, it is not that easy to communicate these options. We will need to encode the actions first and with that comes the first major decision I had to make. Since you can freely move your mouse around in a 360 degree circle in order to shoot or hook into something, there could be at least that many options that need to be calculated at each individual frame. That is right, each action needs to be calculated separately and ultimately the action with the highest likelihood to return a reward is chosen. This behavior though will be learned with time. And since I do not own a PC computer or am able to slow the environment down in order to make all individual calculations, I set it for the following 12 actions that our T can take. By mapping all of the possible actions to just these 12 possibilities shown on screen, my computer can calculate which actions to take quickly enough in order to move through the level at a reasonable pace. But I also lost a lot of possible actions that we might want to take in order to move around more smoothly. For example, if we are in front of a small slope, a human would naturally press D and space at the same time in order to jump and move right simultaneously. By encoding our possible actions to just these 12, we lost the ability to do this and therefore need to jump first and then later move to the right once we are in the air. Or to showcase a more obvious case, 
here we would like to hook into this tile in order to cross the gap, but we would only be allowed to either hook into the roof or this wall. Playing around with this and finally settling with the 12 possible actions for our agent was honestly a lot of fun. I know that this is probably not the optimal solution, but you will see that this is already enough to create a sophisticated agent. Now let's take a look at how our agent sees its environment. For this project I decided to just feed the game screen back to the algorithm after some simple processing steps. We already know that it's quite important to quickly determine actions to smoothly navigate the level. This is even more relevant when we are trying to determine what our agent should see in order to make these decisions. Each individual pixel of each frame feeds into the reinforcement learning algorithm in order to calculate which actions to take. If we are able to remove unnecessary pixels from the screen, the calculation becomes even faster. So first of all, we grayscale each frame and after that we will resize it to 96 by 96 pixels. While I would consider that screen size to be unplayable, the agent does just fine with it. You could say that the AI sees the game just like we do, just grayscaled and in a smaller resolution. Putting everything together, our agent can finally learn how to play T-Worlds and solve the challenge I have given to it. Each training session starts off by resetting the level a couple of times because I made some programming mistakes along the way, but we could say that we just really want to get really ready. <laughs> So, here we see the first baby steps our agent is taking. It will always start off by just performing random actions to get a grip of what actions actually return a reward in the future. But don't worry, we just need to wait for a little while to see if we will get some good results. You can see that in our case, the T was unfortunate enough to fall into a hole. But it randomly recovered, so that's great. Now let's switch things up and look at the vision of our AI body. So here we pretty much see a summary screen which I implemented for debugging purposes, but we can also extract some useful information here. The top left corner is our game screen that features a number in the bottom left corner of it. I'm sorry I don't know how to word it differently and I hope you can follow and just see the number. Uh, this is actually the X coordinate of the map and maybe you guessed correctly, this is what is being used in order to calculate our reward. Since our goal is all the way to the right, we want an increasing X coordinate and we can simply capture that and feed it as a reward to our learning algorithm. On the top right corner, you can see the pre-processed game screen, although it is not downscaled at this point. If you look closely, you can see a frame rate difference between the two screens. The screen on the right gives us a good tell about how smoothly we interface with the game. In our case, it is around 12 frames per second, which is good enough for this case, but it's definitely a factor which should be improved upon. In the bottom right corner, you can see a close-up of our T. These frames are actually used to determine if we should reset and go back to the beginning again, if we ever get stuck in one of those black panes we see on the screen. These small puddles make our tea unable to move and the only form of recovery at this point is to reset. As you can imagine, we also give the tea a massive negative reward for this. This way the tea will try to avoid it in the future. I think negative reward sounds a lot nicer than punishment, right? Okay, let's skip ahead around 50 minutes after we started training and talk about the map our T is playing on. First of all I have to say that the map editor is somewhat easy to use, even though it's not at the level of the aforementioned Mario Maker. But after an evening of learning how to use it, it felt somewhat comfortable. Each part of the map features specific challenges. As you saw in the beginning, there's one hole the T can fall in and it either gets stuck down there, learns how to avoid falling, or learns how to get out of it. The black puddles also resemble a challenge that need to be accounted for. Since our T wants to maximize its score, it will try to avoid these puddles at all costs. This also led the T to mainly use his upright hook, because it found out that it's not as likely to fall into the puddles when using it, while also accumulating score points for moving to the right.
here you can see that I accounted for that behavior. The T is not able to just hook up right and find a connection. It will need to jump and move to the right to be able to progress further into the level. Since it already learned how to use the upright hook, the next larger puddle was no problem at this point. But we face our greatest enemy yet. Here the T needs to move down in order to progress and I thought that it would never learn how to do so when I decided to implement this challenge on the map, but we will see. And here we have it, the first run that makes it to the end of the map. After training for about 5 hours our agent learned that he sometimes has to move back if he does not make any more progress using his upright hooking strategy. I'm just going to let this run play out while I'm going over some closing notes for this video. As you can see our machine learning AI is not yet at the level of superhuman performance and with the restrictions we have in place this is likely to never be the case. Still. I'm very happy with the progress our little buddy made in this short amount of time. So to talk about my goal for this video, I just wanted to create an AI player without really hooking into the game, analyzing the packets which are sent between the client and the server etc. The goal was to make it as similar to a human as possible on how it is able to interact with the game. That is why it's only seeing the game screen and is not receiving any additional information. But at this point we can't even be sure that the game screen was even useful to our agent at all since he could have developed his strategy without any information about the game. Just by observing which inputs result in a reward he could have just said to himself ok I'm just going to push this button all the time and if that doesn't work out I'll try something else. Analyzing behavior like this and implementing solutions will definitely be a topic for another video though. If you have any suggestions or want to see a game featured on this channel, feel free to leave them in the comments. Or if you want to contact me, consider joining my discord server or just message me on twitter. Thanks for watching.